through taxes and your pay stub. And at the very end, I have some pointers for your summer jobs as well. So stick with me, and if you have any questions later, just email me at the school. I hope you're doing okay out there. So taxes and pay stubs. This is what it's all about, cash money. You want to make money and save money, and you want to have money in the bank to take care of yourself, buy the things you care about, and uh, take care of your families, especially when there's emergencies. Here's a picture of a boardwalk. I think uh, as a teenager, you probably think right away about getting a job at Jenks, and that might be okay, but just a reminder, there's tons of other opportunities for someone like you to make a little bit better money. No matter what kind of job you take, um, you'll probably get a pay stub. Basically, you um, work for a couple weeks, and then at the end of two weeks, you get a check. Um, usually, it's a week behind, but not always. Depends on the job. Let me just quickly show you this. So this would be attached to a paycheck. The paycheck would be on the bottom here and you would detach that and take it to the bank. Um, up here shows how much you earned per hour, how many hours you week uh, you worked, and then how much you earned. And here's up to this point in the year. So this is like a running total for, for 52 weeks. Next they show, um, in this case, employer taxes. So every time you earn money, the government takes out, takes their share. So just a heads up, federal, Social Security, Medicare. Um, in this case, it's California taxes. Uh, New Jersey taxes are also a lot. And then this is some other taxes we don't need to get into. Um, and you see there's a lot here that comes out. Um, employee deductions. This is you investing or paying for health insurance. And um, so they have to show you how much that they took out. And then in this case, this employer actually matched them. So the worker put away 100 the employer matched that with another $60. So um, that's just money coming out. Um, and yeah, this is just a summary of all the taxes, everything taken out. The net pay is how much you actually get in the paycheck. So gross earnings is how much you earned. Taxes out, taxes out. Um, nothing came out here. This is how much the check would actually be for. Um, a lot of times you'll also see things like um, how many sick days you have, but just depends on your employer. Okay, so let's get into it. What do you think all that tax money actually pays for? So the government takes a lot of money. I know it says 2018, but um, what are they actually using your money for? Just take a guess, and I'll reveal it right now. This graph estimates that they pay the most for things like Medicare, Medicaid to help give elderly people, people that are retired, some basic health insurance. It's a little misleading here. Actually, we probably spend even more than this on our military. Um, defense is what they call it, but um, yeah. Then this is what's interesting is interest on the debt. The government has a deficit. They don't take in enough money to pay all their bills. So they end up borrowing money, and I'll show you that in a second. So this is an issue. Um, this is the kind of thing that people get upset about. Why are we paying all this interest on our debts? And then you can see um, unemployment insurance, which is exploding right now because of so many people not being able to work. And you can see it trickles down um, education and things like science and roads get very little of the money. Let's just take a look here. You can go and read those if you wanted to. I'm going to skip over them. So, when you earn money, that's called your gross pay. That's how much you earned, and usually you get paid every two weeks. Sometimes you'll get paid um, once a week, but that's pretty rare. You could be working hourly or for a salary. So your summer job will be hourly, but once you have a college degree or you run your own business, you'll pay yourself a salary. It's a set amount. It's always good to negotiate because you might get a salary that looks good, but they expect you to work 80 hours a week, so you have to be careful with that. So really quickly, if you made 15 an hour and you worked 80 hours in two weeks, that'd be full-time, your gross pay before deductions and taxes would be 1200 If you made 70000 a year, 
over 52 weeks, and then I multiply that by two to get two weeks worth, your gross pay would be this much. Typically, the more education you have, the more likely it is that you'll have a salaried position. Cool, so when you want to invest for your retirement, um, the government wants you to do that, so they actually let you invest your money before the taxes come out. That's really beneficial because you pay less taxes because there's less money to be taxed, so it saves you money on taxes, and also you're putting money away for the future. Um, typically, it's called a 401k, but if you're like me and you work for um, a government, it's called a 503b. doesn't matter. Um, just know that you can invest pre-tax dollars. And also, if you have to purchase health insurance, some of you will have to pay for your health insurance or at least pay for part of it. When you do that, though, they at least give you the incentive um, by letting you pay it with money before the taxes came out. So it's a good thing if you can invest with pre-tax dollars, you want to do that as much as you can. This is when you think of taxes. They're called employer taxes. Um, your employer has to take this money out and send it to the government. If they don't, they could get in big trouble. The government could actually come in and close a business that's not doing this. So it's really important for the employers to pay the taxes. You're actually, it's your money, but the employer takes it out and sends it to the government for you. That way, at the end of the year, you don't have to pay the government you know, tens of thousands of dollars. It's been paid a little bit over time. Federal taxes are the most expensive for you, followed by state. Um, some of the other ones to think about, Social Security, the more you earn, the more you pay into Social Security. When you retire, you will get more out. So a lot of times people think Social Security is a bad thing, but it's actually a really good thing. The more you work, the more you earn, the more you pay the more money you get back when you're retired. Sometimes people might get injured on the job, so you pay and pay and pay a little bit every time for something called disability insurance, and that way if you're hurt on the job, you file some forms and you can get paid a little bit of money while you're at home um, getting healthy. Medicare, Medicaid, those are um, for retired people to get some health insurance. And then this is a bunch of stuff we're not going to get into. Okay, so again, your, your employer has to take these taxes out. If they didn't, they could get in big trouble. Okay, this is uncommon, but if you owed child support or you had been um, found guilty of a crime and put in jail and you were forced to pay back that money when you got out, like there's always costs when people commit crimes, the government could actually take the money out of your paychecks. So... Hopefully this won't apply to you. Okay, and then what you're left over with that's actually in your paycheck, that's your net pay. So you start with gross, you have pre-tax deductions, then you pay taxes, maybe you have some post-tax deductions. What you're left over with that's either in your paycheck or your direct deposit, that's your net pay. Just a little bit about federal spending. Um, the government mostly spends their money on things like Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, buying jets, helicopters, bombs, guns. That kind of stuff is very expensive. Having military bases all over the world, very expensive. Also expensive is Medicaid and Medicare. Now, even though you and I pay into these, all of it, the government is still spending more than it's taking in. Um, that's an issue that you should have an opinion about. And... So how do they get enough money every year to keep paying for all these things? They issue treasury bonds. So basically when you buy a treasury bond, it has a value on it and a date. So let's say it says $100. You buy that bond for $80 and whenever it matures in the future, you get the full 100 back. So you buy bonds at a discount and then when they mature, that um, face to the face value, you get that money. So for you, it's an investment, but it's very expensive for the government. They issue bonds because they don't have enough money to pay for these big things that they're spending on. Um, a lot of people hate it. They think it's wrong, but actually, if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. Like you don't want to have to wait and save up to go to college. You're going to take out loans and pay those back. So. Debt is a normal part of how governments run, so, yeah. Okay, so here's a pay stub again, um, just a quick review again. Here's how much the person earned per hour, 
they worked 40 hours, they got this much money. Here's how much they've earned so far this year. These are the taxes that were taken out. Federal, Social Security, Medicare, and then this is California state tax, and then some other taxes for California. Um, and just so you know, you pay in, and so does your employer. So you pay half, they pay half. Something to think about. Okay. Um, you always want to try to invest as much as you can afford pre-tax because then the money comes out and you don't have to pay taxes on that money. And then this is awesome. If your employer will match you, take it. Always take as much as you can get. That's free money that they're giving you because they want to encourage you to do the investing so they will match you on the investing. All that's pre-tax. So you can see gross is how much they actually earned. Then taxes take pre-tax, taxes post-deductions, um, and then the net pay is how much you actually get in your paycheck. Cool. All right. So getting paid. You'll have options. Um, you can get a paper paycheck. You may even still um, get those, but more and more everybody does direct deposit. I love direct deposit. I don't have to worry about getting to the bank or losing a check or anything like that. You set it up when you start your job. Um, you need a checking account and your employer just automatically takes your taxes out and then sends your net pay to your bank account. That's how I like to do it. Um, payroll card. Some employers like Walmart and also the military, they will use a payroll card. This is not a good idea because it's not connected to a bank. It looks kind of like a debit card or a credit card. The money is stored on it like a gift card, but there's no way to save because it's not connected to a bank account. So if they offer you a payroll card, say, no, I want direct deposit. Um, payroll card is makes it really easy for you to spend your money and very hard to save because it's not connected to a bank account. Okay, so when you go to cash your paychecks or to you know, save your money, always use a bank. Never use a check cashing store. They charge huge, huge fees. So you show up with your $1,000 check, they end up charging you like $30, $40 to cash it. It's a total ripoff. The banks will do it for free. And also when you make those deposits, if it's direct deposited or paycheck into your bank, make a point of putting some of that money into savings. You never know when there's gonna be an emergency or you're gonna to need to rely on your savings. Um, another great thing you can do through your bank is to set up auto bill pay so you don't have to worry about paying your bills late. You'll always be on time because you set it up and then your bills always get paid. And I love using the mobile banking app. You can keep track of your money right from your phone. Now, um, this always comes up in class, so I just want to talk about it. Is it okay to work for cash? The short answer is yes. There's nothing illegal about working for cash. Um, if you're a teenager, you're going to get all your tax money back anyways. The government, you're just not making enough money for them to really keep money. Um, but technically, if you don't pay taxes, you're breaking the law. When adults work for cash, they are supposed to pay all their taxes um, at the end of the year. If they're not, they could get into huge trouble. So I'm just going to read this for you. It is legal to work for cash, but you'll owe a lot of taxes at the end of the year because none were withheld by the employer. Um, you also did not invest any money, and you didn't buy insurance with pre-tax. So you're going to have to do that investing or buying insurance with after-tax money. Um, that's more expensive. Also, employers are tricky. So you think you're working for cash. They keep handing you cash, or they keep giving you paychecks where there's no money taken out for taxes. At the end of the year, they hand you a form called a 1099. And basically, even though you were showing up for work and doing everything they asked you to do, the employer is treating you like you're self-employed. Like you didn't really work for them, you worked for yourself. Um, you have to be careful working for cash. Um, and if you're a kid, it's really not something to worry about. But once you turn 18 or you start working full time, you are going to get in trouble if you work for cash and you don't pay your taxes. So please be careful. There's tons of fines and fees and all kinds of trouble if uh, you don't pay your taxes. So be careful.
It's all about having a good life, and now I just wanted to give you some pointers for your summer jobs. Okay, first of all, go to a few places and apply for a job. Um, so many, especially younger kids, start out at like Jenks. That's okay, you know, they'll be flexible on your hours, the work won't be too tough, you'll be with some of your friends, or you get to be around people. Um, but they pay less than minimum wage. They've got a, a special um, deal set up with the state of New Jersey where they can pay those employees less than minimum wage. Avoid those jobs. Um, I would suggest go to a high-end place. What I mean by that is take a look at the people that are shopping there, the people that are getting dinner there. Is it fancy? Is it an expensive place? Um, typically, if you work at a place where things cost more, they tend to pay a little bit better. So um, don't be afraid to go to a place that seems really nice. You'll probably find um, that you can make more money. Now, before you start, um, avoid working for cash. We've already talked about that. Um, negotiate. As soon as you start working, they're going to work you as much as they can. They're going to get as much out of you as they possibly can. So if they offer you ten dollars an hour you know politely say that's great but I was really hoping to make more like fifteen it's scary to negotiate but you'll be surprised they will let you negotiate back and forth so they offer ten you offer fifteen maybe you end up getting eleven or twelve dollars an hour that is hundreds or thousands of extra dollars that you'll earn it also shows them that you know what you're worth and they'll probably treat you better and they may even promote you more quickly, things like that. Um, don't be afraid to start your own business. So maybe you're going to work part-time at a bakery or a Colonial or, you know, the Bayhead Yacht Club or wherever. Um, but maybe you could offer some babysitting on the weekends. Or maybe you could um, start mowing people's lawns in your neighborhood. There's... There's no better way to make money than to have your own business. So don't be afraid to work part-time for someone and also find something you're into and um, start your own business. No matter what you do, save your money. Um, so one kid works part-time, one kid works full-time. The part-time kid saves a lot, the full-time kid spends a lot. So even though the full-time worker made more money, but they spent it all. So at the end of the summer, the end of the year, they don't have anything to show for it. Whereas someone who is a good saver, they have something to show for all that work. They have savings in the bank. So have fun, but save. Save your money. Um, if you're saving up for your car or you're saving for college, you should save on top of that savings. So if you're just saving it up to spend it on college or a car, that's not really saving. That's saving up to spend. So Try to become a saver. You'll be really glad as an adult if you can save your money and um, avoid just spending everything you make. Okay. Especially for nicer jobs, they may ask for references. Um, they don't want your mom and dad as a reference or your aunt or uncle. Um, they want a professional reference. So you've been a student in my class. If you would like me to be a reference, I will always do that for you, but you have to let me know. Um, if you do decide to put me down as a reference, you got to make sure you email me right away or maybe even better, email me first just to let me know because they will call your references just to see like, what can you tell me about so-and-so? So I will be glad to give you a reference. Don't be afraid to negotiate your um, pay and save your money. Don't just blow it all having fun. Be a saver. I hope this helps. And uh, if you need anything, just let me know. Thanks, and have a good week, everybody.